My name is Lucia Richards, I'm a visual artist and I have ancestry from Leonidio. This is the house of my great-great-grandfather who was the first mayor of this little town. My connection to Kilim started when one day, more than 20 years ago, I was lying on this couch behind you and I took a look at the Kilim that is on the floor and I was impressed. As I said, I'm a visual artist, so I was impressed by the form. And I was impressed that I've never noticed before how amazingly um, warm the colors were and striking and the simplicity and power of the form, the, the tooth-edged square that in the local Kilim language is called Herakia, the little hands, or Kteni. Kteni is the, the comp for the, for the loom. This particular kilim we are sitting on uh, is a kilim created by assignment for the dowry of my great-grandmother. What is a kilim? A kilim is a, a sort of carpet, but it's different because it is a woven that it can be used both sides. There is no right and wrong. And um, it is also thinner than a, than a carpet. So my gra great grandmother did not um, did not weave. Uh, maybe she did some embroidery or some of these kind of things that they they pertain to the household activities. But she had her servants and she had her the women she would assign with. So she had time to do the social networking, the PR for her husband, to bring up the uh, the girls and boys she she gave birth to. The key limb became part of the decoration of the house and a reminder of, the, of her origins. But it was not the, um, the proof of her own manual work, it was rather the proof of her wealth, because it was expensive to create something like that, and I suppose it took a lot of months to, to create it. But at the time, there were people in Leonid already who were um, professionally active. They were not uh, weaving kilims for the household, they were doing that for money. So there were women, and if we think about today, it's kind of, of sad, who had their own industry. They were managers of their own kilim factories or kilim workshops. Um, and this, uh, let's say, it was, it was a different way of looking at, at crafts. It was not just for, to cover their own needs, but uh, also to, to provide for the local taste and for the people who had the money and could afford it. Weaving, weaving in Leonidio was a, a, a woman's business. Uh, and we have examples of very successful weavers. Um, we know them by name, etc., and uh, by the awards they won uh, when they went to international competitions or in Athens, they, in fairs. They were very active, they were really business oriented. So uh, it is a good example of what, how this tradition could be re reused, not, re -dis not discovered. It's not a new use we have to discover, it was practice anyway. They, they used to, to weave uh, high quality kilims and sell them. In 2004, I had a solo show inspired by the form of Herakia. It's the major local motif. And then I started researching and my research brought me to the United States. I got a scholarship from Fulbright and I went to the Textile Museum in Washington, D.C., where I discovered that the Herakia was not originally Greek, came from Asia Minor, in the luggage of a woman named Polixeni Dunia, who was married to Leonidio. She came from Maidini, 
uh, in 18, around 1860, and she brought her kilims from Turkey, at the time it was the um, Ottoman Empire, and their kilims were so pu popular in Leonidio that they started reproducing them, but in a different way. So they took away the central motifs of the Turkish kilims and they rearranged and they created their own their own killings, their own designs. So for me, the challenge was as an artist, as a, a contemporary artist, what do, do killings tell us today? What is the statement that they keep repeating through color, through combination of colors, through this very abstract and very strong form of talking about holding hands. So this is how I started uh, making my own interpretations. And many of these interpretations were actually, because they were uh, based on observation, when I talked to people in Leonidio, they were not so far away from, from how uh, this language has been uh, understood in the local community. Uh, the value of teaching crafts is very important in general, not just for Greece or for the local community. Um, also in terms of, let's say, other political ideas behind that can be expressed by crafts. Like we have the climate change challenge or we have the challenge of the overconsumption. Uh, we come now after, let's say, 60 years in Western Europe, or after the war, the Second World War in, in Western Europe, consump consumption has been uh, a feature of happiness. Uh, so people had to consume a lot, use, throw away, use, throw away. This is exactly the, the, the opposite. These are kilims and objects that they last not just for life, for many generations. This is my grand, great grandmother, grandmother, mother, four generations, and it will survive me, I think. It can be 200 years old, 300 years, 400. So it's not something you throw away. Uh, it's something, even if there are no memories or family memories, it's something that it is produced with a lot of pain and a lot of dedication and a lot of, of skills. Uh, and then you keep it for a very, very long... You don't need to buy something else. It's a very different concept from the concept that I have to buy the seasonal fashion, new fashion, the new dress, the new th th this and that. It's a little bit anti-commercial uh, because fashion in all, in all items, in dresses, in carpets, in furniture, has to be renewed in order to sell. So this is it's a philo philosophical, not just an economic uh, question. It's, a, it's not a business, but you can make a business out of it. I, I believe that. And um, it's maybe a little bit uh, too early to convince the community that it's worth investing uh, in not just learning the weaving skills, but thinking, educating weavers, and uh, maybe the mission of crafts and textile is, is also a diplomatic mission, could be a diplomatic mission to bring people, to make people reflect that peace has, we have more to win in times of peace. We, there are more things that connect us than things that divide us. Um, so this is also the way I see crafts lately, uh, that one can build bridges between various cultures exactly because of this common taste. People love to have a nice home with a nice kilim or a nice carpet or um, have nice things to enjoy, to use. Um, and this is, it changed the way I see art. And personally, I'm more, and Christoph, more involved in crafts than visual art uh, because exactly the use of objects and the connection to the memories you invest on these objects and your personal taste and your personal collection um, makes me... It's very different from the pretentiousness of art, of contemporary art that we observe nowadays and uh, there is more freedom for visual artists right now in the crafts. It's still, it's still open to everything.